You want to play? Yeah, we'll go ahead and hit play. Uh, and um, shelter building with Antonio. We're gonna go ahead and turn the volume down. So the sound capture wasn't great outside. We decided we were gonna do a pre-record for the shelter building, and that's on the way. Yeah, um, we're gonna do a pre-record for the shelter building. So as we go along here, I'm gonna kind of do commentary and narrate over. We decided to pre-record it. Um, so we can get outside and guarantee just because we weren't sure about weather coming in today. Uh, now on the video, the main screen, we have this really cool effect here so that I'm popping up kind of double. I kind of like this and kind of don't. Um, on the main screen, as you can see, I'm up here. You probably can't see my mouse. I don't want to touch it. All right. So going on here with our structure building, we have our, our main post with lashings. All right, so that main top post that I keep petting and patting and testing out and making sure it's working. <laughs> that's <laughs> and making sure it's working. So that's the main stability uh, for your lean-to structure uh, going into any kind of shelter building. Now, shelter building itself, which is what we're talking about today, uh, shelter building itself pretty much comes down to when you're out in the woods, whether it be just for fun, testing out your abilities and your skills, building a shelter from what you're able to find naturally out in the woods or it could be something a little more vital to survival if you're caught out in a crazy rainstorm while you're out hiking or backpacking or uh, whatever you know, whatever you're doing out in the woods hunting even um, and you have to build a structure to keep yourself out of the rain uh, and just protect yourself from the elements um, now this basic what we're going to hear is how we did the lashings to get that main structural beam up and sturdy so that we could actually start building off of it. And what I'm going into here is what's called, a, remember if you watched our lashings and hitching, our hitching and lashings class, uh, we did a timber hitch. So what I'm about to do here is a timber hitch where uh, you'll see me there going ahead and wrapping it around. All right, so we get our initial hitch set up. And going to go ahead and go into a couple of wraps. Um, yesterday when we were filming this, uh, we thought about going through the process where I did the initial beam, but going by yourself or with your hands, it just made more sense to do a demo down below and go into it. But with that timber hitch that you can see there, all right, and I got my little my rope and everything so I can even do stuff. Um, with that timber hitch. You wrap it around, and as it's wrapped around, as opposed to um, going off and doing another wrap to go into the clove hitch, on the timber hitch, you wrap around whatever you're going on, and then you go ahead and you spin it like that multiple times, if you can see that. All right, and the idea of that is that the, the rope or the cord that you're using creates that friction lock. So that, that post that you're wrapped around gets locked in, inside of it. And as you can see there in the video, yeah, that timber hat, that <laughs> that timber hitch worked out pretty nice. All right. So, but the timber hitch alone isn't going to hold it up there. You got to get into your actual lashing. So you're going into a square lashing, which again, by yourself, as you can see in the video, can be tricky. So if you can ever have, you know, multiple people, it, it helps out just holding everything up. So, Corey's expert camera work there. Um, <laughs> getting around it and getting that first wrap. And when I did this yesterday, and you'll see here in a second, uh, I just had a random piece of, of cord so I could do the demo real quick. But you can see already, just holding it taut with my hand, it's on there relatively sturdy. Now, you want to go around and wrap a couple more times to really lock that down so that that post or that end wouldn't go anywhere. Uh, especially since after securing that with your uh, with your square hitch or your square lashing, securing that, you're then going to want to go to the next end to secure it to the next tree so that everything's nice and solid. And when it pulls back out, those of you who are just joining in, when it pulls back out, you'll see the, the main demonstrative one that we did lashed up there. And it's pretty sturdy where... Um, you know, I, I was hanging off it and pulling down it and I'm pretty, I'm a, I got a decent bit of weight to me as a dude. So it, it held it up pretty nice. And that, what we're using there is just some basic, um, you know, clothesline. 
And right there, going into the fraps, because remember on all of our lashings, you do your wraps around, whether you know whatever lashing you're doing. And then after you've done your consecutive wraps, you do a frap. And the frap loops around it just to lock it down to place. As I said, when you zoomed out, yeah, that thing's on there pretty sturdy. It was, uh, it's amazing what you can do with a bit of imagination, a little bit of knowledge, you know, hands-on knowledge and going in and just, you know, lashing some stuff together to start building a structure. Um, a couple summers ago, we actually had uh, a counselor that worked in our uh, outdoor living with outdoor living skills and survival and nature programs for the summer. I want to say it was 2018, I think he might return last year, uh, Fabian. And he constructed this massive tower out in the A field um, that w it was solid as a rock. I remember when we finally had to take it down just because it's the end of the season, we needed the space opened up because we were moving into our outdoor center. Um, he built it solid as can be. He was following through all of his hitching and lashings very accurately, very properly, and very nice and taut and secure. It was almost kind of sad having to take it down because it was very impressive. And he had a model of it as well that was floating around for a while. I'm not sure what ended up happening to it. I'm sure if we really looked for it around camp, we'd probably find it somewhere inevitably. There I am surfing. We're looking away. You can see the hillside. Oh, so here we were talking about, you know, location. Location, just like real estate, is very important in shelter building. When you're on a hillside, you want to make sure that uh, the way you orient things, there is a preferred way to go about it. And there's little cheats. You can see I have this little rock barrier built up on the upper side um, because as I'm facing you in this video, my right, which would be your left looking at this, is uphill. And then my left or our right looking at it is downhill. So you want to make sure that if you have, if you're at, you know, building on the side of a hill or the bottom of a hill, you're building or structuring some kind of barrier. This is more of a survival thing. Some sort of barrier just to help you out in case water is coming down or anything like that that could, you know, flood out your your camp, you know, your shelter. And we moved some rocks just to set up a, a real basic. Some people would stack higher um, and even go around the tree or up closer to the tree a little tighter. But again, we were just doing this for a quick demonstration. And as you can see, we've got the two posts already lashed on. We used the same lashing, so you had your, your timber hitch and then a basic square lashing to get those posts secured and then at the bottom if you're watching I'm kind of blocking the way I'm going to see if I can move you can see we kind of put some I place some rocks some anchor rocks just to kind of lock all right lock those uh those posts in place those sticks those timbers so that you had a steady you know frame to the structure is what we we're going for and here in a second in a little bit there's another post I'm going to put up so we can really square it off and really start getting into it um, the whole time we're out there, <laughs> you gotta, you know, whatever you're doing, structure building or shelter building, um, you gotta make sure you're keeping, uh, you're paying attention to your terrain and where you're at. Cause you know, you're out in the woods, there's rocks, there's uh, tree limbs, there's sticks, there's bushes, there's all sorts of things. So you just gotta have that situational awareness of, you know, what's around you, where you're putting your foot next. And that's the same with hiking or anything like that. You always want to be paying attention to your surroundings just so you can maintain safety. We always tell our kids that whenever we go out for structure building. All right, so right now I'm doing my explanation. You can see off to the right, here's a fun wall while I'm catching up in the video. Off to the right, there's an older structure that was built probably by a class that was you know a while back where they were doing more of a straight standard lean-to. And in that straight center lean to, you usually look for a tree that has uh, a Y in it between two branches, a nice solid spot where you can lean up. Um, one of the a main posts, kind of like what I have there set up. And then you build off it, making kind of a, a quasi almost TP lean to structure out of it. And it creates something that you can build off of and waterproof with whatever you can find or have available. Just so you can have, again, something to get out of the elements or, you know, when I was a kid, we would build these all the time and use them just to, you know, as forts, you know, for playing in the backyard or out in the backwoods. So here, as I'm showing in the video, we'll get back to what I'm actually doing here. We got the stick leaned up and placed in about the right spot where we want it so it lines up with everyone else. 
Again, we're going into our timber lashing or a timber hitch. So you get yourself situated with the rope. All right, we're trying to decide, make sure we're in a good spot for it. And it's all about, you know, you got to size it up and make sure, you know, and maybe it doesn't work out the first time, so you untie it and go back and put it in a better spot for everything to lock down and work. But we're getting that first loop through, and then we're going to wrap it. We're going to, yeah, we're going to slide it around. And we'll do it usually two or three times at least, or until you run out so you don't have excess hanging down. And we'll go ahead, we'll go into our wraps for the actual lashing. All right, so we went down the back, come back up around the front, go around back again, around the front again. This is a longer piece of rope, this, or this is the same piece of rope we were using for the earlier in the video uh, for the demonstration on how to get that uh, horizontal bar put on. So this for the vertical bar is perfect because it's just smaller pieces put, coming together. But we got couple good wraps going on there I think yeah here we're gonna go into yeah we're going into the fraps now again the fraps are right down through the middle around and around as many times as makes sense tightening every single time you go through just to really lock those pieces together because um, when you're doing any kind of structure or outdoor survival structure or anything like that you want to make sure that it's nice and solid all right because if, it, if it's a heavy rainstorm that comes through say it is a survival situation and there's a heavy rainstorm that comes through, you want to make sure it's not going anywhere. It's not blowing away off your backs and exposing you to the elements. And there we're doing our clove hitch. All right, so we're just doing a basic clove hitch so we have everything locked down, putting tension on it so it's not going to slide out. Um, I believe, yeah, when I tighten this down, something, this is a trick that I've used before. I've seen people, I've seen others use it because it's pretty common, little, you know, catch on. You have this excess hanging there. And that excess, you could tie a loop in it, or a permanent bite, or a figure eight, or whatever you want to use, not wise, you know, show off, depending on what you got available. And you can hang your boots from that, you can hang your backpack, you can hang, you know, some, you know, whatever you need to to try and air dry it. Um, again, you know, if you're building a shelter to have an escape to get out of the elements, um, if you're out in the elements, you're going to end up getting wet. So here we transition, we got the tarp. Um, the tarp is, you know, ultimate cheat code if you have a tarp. Some people will take a small tarp just for laying on or for wrapping their gear in when they're out and about in the wilderness. Um, a tarp in general, you know, I remember back in the day being a kid going out on Boy Scout camping trips and we'd have, they'd have a giant jumbo tarp that they would literally, um, you know, put a string up between ropes and lay it out and stake it down. And we'll get, in, actually talk about that later in the video, but, um, They'd set up and you have you know a whole mess of guys sleeping underneath that just to get out of the rain and the and the the other elements or whatever and have you know somewhere safe to dry up a little bit or get some sleep. But here you got it. Of course, fed us up a little bit and came up to help because again you know with all of these, it helps having a second pair of hands. Like, is it doable? Just me and my two hands. Yeah, I could get it through. But having that second pair of hands really does help sometimes. And again, you know, just setting this up for demonstration purposes. It, you know, we're, we're just trying to show you the gist. So we got the tarp laid out over our basic frame. And now we're talking about um, tying down the ends of the tarp. Okay. So for the tie down, I just use a basic slip knot, which we're going to show here. We'll see how well we zoomed in on it. But we actually, oh, that's right. We want to start over the, over here uphill. Um, just because of how the tarp was laying on the framework that we laid out, it just made more sense to start at this front corner. It's really, it's one of those things where you got to go with your instincts and what makes the most sense to you. But I always start at the top, like we are here, the, the quote unquote front of our, of our shelter, uh, just so you can get everything locked down and then pull it as taut as you want it and stretch it in the back. And we'll get to that here in a second, but just a quick little slip knot, um, or courtesy knot. There's a half a dozen names they can give for that particular knot. You put a little slip knot on, you can adjust it, tighten it wherever you need it. And it's easy to untie or come unraveled as long as it's not sitting there for, you know, years on end. And then we come inside and we're going to tie it off. Again, probably with a clove hitch if I remember right. And we're just tying it off to that internal, that, that section there. So that it's not going to slide anywhere. It's just creating enough friction. And 
on natural sticks as opposed to like you know when we were doing the demonstrations we had these dowel rods and the hatching the the hash the hitches and lashings video Ooh, stuttering today um we i was using these dowel rods and they're really smooth okay so they're they're a little rough but for the most part they're pretty smooth and easy for ropes to slide on whereas a natural piece of wood like that you know a timber or a limb they're a little rougher and more and they're not as straight so it, it helps when you do when you hitch it off or tie it off so that the friction and maybe you know a, bl- a bulge or whatever that's going on it will stop it and keep it from sliding and coming undone um so you're still depending on the knot or the hitch you're using to lock it down but it has that added um kind of i guess you could say mechanical <coughs> mechanical advantage to lock itself down and not go anywhere and you just get it to a good spot where it makes sense and notice i'm not doing it a whole big length of rope you know i'm trying to conserve my materials available because i only have so i only brought so much with me because realistically you know you're not going to go out with you know infinite rope just pulling out magically from your backpack or your or your pocket or wherever you're storing it you know you're only going to have a finite amount uh so you want to conserve and use only what you need and then you could leave this again for another you know dangle that you can tie things off on for air drying or for whatever purpose you have for them um but in this video as you'll see here in a little bit you'll be cutting it whenever you you know if you guys are doing this at home uh make sure that if you know you're a little younger you have someone older responsible either working the scissors or the pocket knife or whatever you're using to cut the string down um and always fold it put your put your cutting implements away or off to the side you don't want to just be walking around with them you know it's just a common safety ideal all right so we cut off so we have a bit extra so i can come over to this other corner now i got that first corner for the most part secured all right i'm going to flip it over i'm going to do pretty much this pretty much the same thing and see where you know how far we can stretch this guy you know so we're getting everything adjusted a lot of times when you have time to really build a structure you know because this is more of a planned structure and later on in the video we'll talk about a hasty structure but on a planned structure you're you know you're constantly adjusting and fitting and making things work to what you have available because i mean we're working with just some basic basic tools but you know basic resources and what we what we were able to find out in the woods now now we're working on the back made our way towards the back and the bottom uh where again it's just that slip knot that quick and easy onto the tarp right through the eyelet um and then bringing it down just lining up seeing where it makes the most sense and then we're going to go ahead and we found another nice knot in the woods so that we have something to lock it up against we're gonna go ahead and tie it off do another little clove hitch clove hitches i mean they're very applicable you can use them in all sorts of cir- circumstance and settings and they're gonna do what you need them to do um and then we're going through yeah we're just tying it off so we're doing the second loop on the clove hitch and then we'll tighten it down make sure everything's where we want it and again you know the beauty of a hitch is they're relatively as long as there's no weight or strain pulling on them they're relatively easy to undo if you're manually untying. Um, so as far as like making later adjustments, you know, or even just recovering the rope for future use, if you're into that, um, really isn't too difficult or crazy of a thing. As opposed to a lot of the more heavier knots, um, the longer they sit, the more that they've been pulled on and strained on, the harder they are to recover later on down the road. Um, especially the thinner your your rope or material is. So if you're using like paracord you know clothesline whatever again we got our pocket knife we cut it short we close our knife put it away so that again you don't want it just out and about um or just walking around with it with no you know purpose to your action so now we're going to go to the other side hopefully not trip over rocks (laughs) (laughs) again uh pay attention to your surroundings and what's going on around you you don't want to be tripping over things um some people are not, you know, some people always claim to be natural klutzes and that's okay. It happens. You know, it's just a matter of awareness, you know, making sure you're, keep it aware. I, tri- I trip over things plenty and have to catch myself, so don't feel bad. Here we're talking about, you know, tying it off. Now you'll notice on the other end, I'm not holding it by the corner for this end. And 
part of it is because it, it just made more sense for it to fit by using the second eyelid in, but also because I had a, had a master plan that popped up at this point in the video process. Um, so we decided to use the second eyelid in, second or third, whatever lined up best with that. And you'll see here we have this excess corner that's draping over now, which we can either just leave draped over or we can tuck in and secure somehow internally, uh, creating a nice flap again because, you know, where, you know, uphill is in comparison in orientation to this part of the structure, just, you know, it made sense, you know, to tie it off and create a little flap to cut down on, you know, wind coming downhill at us as well as rain and exposure. Um, it just, it made a lot more sense that way at the time. And again, you know, maybe after, you know, say I decided to spend the night out there, um, and we had a crazy rain, I found out, oh, I want to reorient this and slide this tarp over or have this facing in another direction that makes more sense. Or maybe just completely re do a rebuild of, uh, everything we got going on. So we did that sliding, not, you know, that, that slip knot again. We're going into our, again, we're going to do a nice clove hitch. You know, and again, you know, that wood, you know, that natural faced wood and bark, it's, you know, it's rough and, and tough enough where it, it gives you a better grip, just making sure things don't slide around. Some people actually go in, if they have a, uh, a heavier cutting implement, like a hatchet or something, and they'll notch it, so just to cut down any chance of anything sliding back and forth, it really, it's, dude, it's, it's just, it's up to your preference and how in depth you're going and what your circumstances are. Again, if you're just building this for a quick thing to just test your skills, cool. If you're doing it because you know you're trying to survive a scenario, more power to you. It really just depends on where you're going with it. So we created a nice little flap and that's something that can easily be adjusted and made a little more fitting for everything. And now we're gonna do a pan around so you guys can see, you know, kind of our whole basic final product. And you'll notice that as we, you know, once we start moving, as we look at this, it's not 100% taut. I mean, you could, we could go back and forth all day on whether or not it should be perfectly taut or if you should have a little bit of movement in it. Um, it really, again, it, it's really, it comes down to preference and utilization. You know, what, what are we doing here today, you know? Um, so, yeah, so here we're going to do our pan around. We're going to check this whole thing out and see where it all goes. Yeah, that's what's there going on. Oh, there we go. All right, and I'm actually going to sneak around the other side here, and you'll see because I wanted to get in and show you guys just how how well it fit a person. You know, this tarp here, if I remember right, it's a 10 foot by 12 foot tarp, so it's a decent sized tarp. Uh, you can usually find a tarp like this, you know, most you know hardware stores and you know anywhere that you know anywhere that has a camping section really. Uh, for usually a pretty reasonable price, it's just simple two-sided tarp. It's silver on one side, blue on the other. But as you can see, yeah, you know, again, I'm you know I'm about five eleven and, and a decent sized guy. I'm fitting in there pretty comfy. Yeah, you know, that's not too bad. I look pretty happy. Um, and in there, you know, there's enough room in there technically where I could easily fit myself. And if I had a big backpacking bag or a rucksack, I could probably fit that in there relatively easily and keep it dry. Uh, as well as maybe even another person. And at the very least, I could probably fit myself, my rucksack, and at least my dog in there so we could get out of the weather for a little bit. Uh, now, obviously, it, you know, in actual implementation, we would do this a lot more cleaner. This was, again, kind of a let's show them the basics and how it works and a starting point. Um, just for, you know, educational purposes. So you guys knew what we were getting into, what we had available. So now we're getting into the hasty. So for the, for the hasty shelter... It's something we're trying to throw up quick and get done. Um, this is something you would do, you know, in a pinch. Yeah, you know, the rain's already falling. It's not a clear day like today where it is in this video. Uh, it's, you know, the, the rain's hitting, the thunder's cracking. You know, we got to get underneath something um, just to get out of the weather and dry up, dry off or stage as dry as we can. So you'd have a rope. Uh, some people would use a rope. You could use a paracord. Paracord's, you know, 550 cord's pretty strong. Um, you could use that, you know, what we were using earlier, that, that, uh, clothesline string. Uh, for this, I actually stole, uh, a rope that I actually used for magnet fishing. Um, just as something to use. It, it was pretty long. 
which is good because it makes it versatile for all sorts of things. If you were caught, you know, if you happen to have it on you and you're caught in a survival situation. Um, and on that rope, there's actually a, a prefabricated little eyelet that you clip your magnet on to for doing magnet fishing. And uh, pretty much what we're going to do here is, you're going to see me here in a second. I'm going to do a quick tie off on one end and just stretch it out. Now again, because of that hillside, something I prefer to do, and if your preference differs, that's fine. You're allowed to have a different preference. Um, but something I like to do is actually give it a bit of an angle. Um, just one, it gives you a little more area to work with underneath the, the canopy. And two, it also, you know, it, it's going to deflect and, and cover thing cover you from the elements a little a little more advantageously, I guess you could say, a little more particular in a more particular way. And you'll notice I didn't clear any of the the, the brush or the rubble underneath. Um, <clears throat> one of the big reasons for that was in a real life situation, if you're doing a hasty, you're building a hasty cover, um, you're, that's going to be the last of your worries. You're going to do that after you get everything set up, so that you have something to get under. Um, I'd rather have something to get under and move things out than spend more time out in the elements and then setting up a shelter. But as you can see, I'm just doing a simple slip knot, just a quick tie off, um, so that I can easily slide and adjust and put to right where I want it. And I can slide it off, back it off and untie it relatively easily. Um, that eyelet or that excess that's hanging again, just like at the, the more planned shelter we were doing before, earlier in the video, that eyelet, it's, that's a spot where you can tie something off or hang it to, you know, to air dry something while you're, you know, evading everything. And here the rope decided to fight us a little bit because, again, nature. Um, it's it's what happens. <laughs> but we're going to stretch it out over to that next tree. Again, you know, be considerate where you're stepping whenever you're out in the woods. You always want to make sure you got something solid under your feet so you're not, you know, running the risk of or the hazard of tripping or falling. No one likes getting hurt while they're out in the woods. All right. And here, <clears throat> for this wrap, so we did a basic wrapping hitch, um, just or a lockdown hitch, just to lock this down. And so all you do for that is essentially, you do, you're do going around the tree, and then you're going under and over, and, th and then over on the, the next wraps. And that just locks down the rope to where it needs to be. And you see we kind of bunched up the rope to make it a little easier to handle. And then you see I'm going under. Pulling it tight, getting the angle that I prefer. Again, it's a personal preference. Maybe you want to angle with the hill, against the hill. It's really up to you and what you're trying to do. Um, and it's a bright orange rope, which is always nice. Now, one of the pros uh, to the rope we actually do a survival scenario where we're like, okay, you got you, know, you got to pick some objects, and you know why do you pick them? A tarp is always good because most tarps are double sided, especially if it is a double sided tarp because you can use it for signaling. Um, and if you can have a big bright rope that stands out in the woods, especially if you're hoping for someone to find you. All right, but we went under a second time. All right, there we go. Oh, oh we dropped the rope. Good job. Yeah. Smooth. All right, now we're going over top. Nice and tight. So it ain't going nowhere. And see, it's it's constant adjustment, looking at it and saying, like, okay, where, what makes the most sense? So we're doing a little loop. See how we tied it through, pulling all the excess. It's kind of interesting watching yourself doing stuff like this. It's good study material for us. Um, just getting to see, you know, how we make things work. All right, tighten that off. And that's it. And it tie, didn't make any other crazy knots or anything like that. And you just pull on that excess to pull back and you can pop it loose when you need to. So you can recover the rope and undo everything. Um, and that excess rope, you could do a number of things with it. You could, use, you could cut it and then use the excess to tie off or do whatever you need to do with rope. Um, that's relatively solid. Just what you need for just, again, it's a hasty. Um, it's not meant to be perfect. It's it's meant to be, you know, something that you can throw a tarp or 
or whatever over. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be a tarp. Say it's just for you. Um, you can use a uh, you can use a rain poncho. I've seen people use trash improvise and use trash bags. Um, if you happen to have a tarp available or handy, tarp works the you know kind of works the best. Um, heck, I've even seen it done where people used an old tent and broke it. You know, cut it to need and uh, draped it over and used it because maybe the tent was broken or they didn't have the poles or whatever the case was where it just didn't make sense to use the tent as it was initially. And then what you would do for this hasty is if you happen to have uh, like stakes, actual camping stakes, you could stake it down. But otherwise, you would just improvise stakes out of small sticks stabbed in the ground. Now, here, now this is a big thing is how to fold a tarp. Now, I guess I fold a tarp a little different. I do it similar to how you know I was raised, how I learned to, uh, how, to, how to fold a blanket. But how I do it, and you'll see Corey pop up to help us here in a second, because again, you know, two's better than one, helps out making things work and go a little faster. So you take it, and you fold it over to the halfway point, is what's going to happen here. As soon as I stop chatting about it. All right, there we go. So you fold it over to the halfway point. You fold it over to the halfway point from the other side, and you fold that completely in half. Not too bad. All right, and then you're going to section it two or three feet, really up to preference. And you do that a couple folds from one end, and then you finish the folds from the other end just to lock everything in. And you want to make sure that before you fold up a tarp or put it away, if possible, you want to dry it out in the sun or just let it dry in general so you don't have any moisture caught inside the tarp because that could eventually turn into mold, make it moldy. So you want to dry it out, fold it up like this. And the reason I fold it up like this is because I could unfold, just unfold that last fold I did. Just unflap that and chuck it out and just quickly deploy the tarp. It just makes it super easy to get tarps deployed out so that people, so you can use it for whether it's making a shelter, covering something, whatever you got to do. Um, and if you want to challenge me on that, you know, feel free to, you know, take a blanket or a tarp, whatever you have. Uh, first time around, fold it whatever makes sense to you, and then try to deploy it as quick as you can. And then second time, fold it the way that I just demonstrated, and see if that's faster. If it isn't, awesome, that's nice. Um, you, you did it right. If it is faster to do it the way I showed, give it a test run. Um, so you know, it's a beautiful day out. You know, if you have some woods nearby or in the backyard or some trees or a spot you can do it, you know, get outside for a little bit, stretch your legs, try it out. Do some hitching, some lashing, see see what you can come up with and how nice of a structure you can build. You know, share if you do it, share pictures. You know, we love to get in the picture feedback uh, from the survival bracelets with Becky the other day. And, uh, you know, other than that, I hope we see you guys tomorrow. I know tomorrow we're going to be with Becky with Tracks and Traces. Um, she's scouting out camp, some spots on camp so that she's got some cool things to show you guys. And, um... Other than that, you know, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of the day, and thanks for spending some time with us here on Online Camp Classroom.